All right, everybody, welcome back to another School of Knock. At this point, you've worked through some of the most important fundamentals and aspects of building yourself up into proper shooting posture. Now, over the course of the last few weeks, we've worked on several things that have all continually built on themselves and worked towards the greater goal, which is me wanting you to understand the importance of your technique and now I think you're probably at the first stages of realizing does my equipment fit me perfectly and this is important because this step is something that is very valuable to know only after you've built yourself first and then have your bow adjusted to fit you properly now the steps that we've gone through, just to repeat, is going to be our stance, our grip, our shoulder. Last week we worked on anchor position. Now this week is going to be a week that we focus on adjusting our head to acquire the peep sight. Now with the peep sight, there's going to be several things that we're going to want to focus on. But one of the things that's critical about this is that you continue to always put the anchor position in front of the peep sight. Because when people start to shoot uphill and downhill, immediately they start wanting to pull the peep back to their eye. And even some people who are so accustomed to peep sights and just wanting to see through the peep sight, what you'll find is if you look back at photos, sometimes the string's at the tip of their nose, sometimes it's on the side of the nose, sometimes it's past the nose, and that's all about whether or not they're able to see through that peep sight and then their anchor is adjusted accordingly, and that is absolutely incorrect. We need to go through all of the steps that I've talked about and make sure your anchor is solid and consistent and facial pressure is light and then the head is slightly adjusted to acquire that peep sight. Now what some of you may have found out is that now once you're anchoring properly and you're learning to shoot proud, I've seen through some of the comments and posts people are saying now I feel like the string is just a little bit in front of my face. Now, earlier today, we're releasing podcast 212, the Knock On Podcast 212, and I do go in depth more about this subject on that podcast, so please feel free to reference that. Now, when the string is a little bit in front of the face, that's an identifier that now that we're learning to shoot proud instead of learning to shoot small, and we're learning to anchor the same every time and not adjust our anchor so that the string then fits our face, we're learning that string angle now has importance and it has importance not only on the angle, whether or not it's a sharper string angle or a broader string angle, but how the stopping end draw length of your bow, in other words, where it stops in that final length, how that is related to the string angle. Because if you have a shorter axle to axle length and a longer draw length, then that string angle may be a sharper angle and you'll find that if it stops right at the corner of your mouth, you're having to tip your head quite a bit farther forward in order to find it. So in that case, you might need to actually increase the draw length just a little bit on those shorter axle axle lengths so that that string can just come back that extra quarter inch so that it can just touch the tip of the nose. It's gonna be important that you focus on tip of the nose because side of the nose starts to tell you that you're bringing your head forward past the string and you're also creating string pressure on the face. If the string's on the side of the nose, it's hard to know how forward or back you truly are on that. But when it's right at the tip of the nose, it's assuring you that the string is in front of the face, the string has a clear path to the target, and also your head position is the same every time. If you're dipping down too much, you're gonna have the string on the side of your nose. If you're off the string, obviously the adverse is true. So there's a few things I wanna go over here in a minute about target acquisition 
and how peep alignment along with your front sight is absolutely critical. But these factors that I'm talking about now equally relate to that, but they're important that you put them first. So when it comes to peep acquisition or looking through your peep site, again, I want you to go through all the steps that we've gone through, finding that solid anchor position, keeping your head on a swivel, just like what we talked about, not bringing your head forward or having your head back and finding your anchor and then coming forward. You need to just keep that head straight, look towards the target, draw to the bow stops, bring that release over to the face. And for most part, it's simple matter of if the strings here, you're turning your nose from like a 12 o'clock position. If you're looking straight at the target at 12 o'clock, the string is gonna really be sitting at about one o'clock. So all you have to do is slightly turn your head just a little bit so that the tip of your nose is now at about one o'clock touching that string. And so you're looking right past the inside portion of your eye and you're gonna have good string clearance, good flight path. Now, when you do this correctly, you actually have four reference points. You're gonna have the reference point of the anchor position on the face, but you're also now gonna lightly feel the string on the corner edge of your mouth. And I want you to think of those times where you've been out in the field and you've picked a piece of grass and you've tried to, you know, harass one of your buddies with it and make them feel like there's a fly or a mosquito bugging them and you're just barely touching them with it just enough to where it's causing them to want to swat at it. If you're doing that with the string on the side of your face, then you're, you have assurance that it's at the corner of your mouth and not past your mouth or at the front of the lip. Essentially, you're trying to make sure it's in the same place, but you're also making sure you're not smashed into it. A lot of people that have kisser buttons become dependent on the kisser button and just pulling that back to the mouth first. Wherever the anchor is, it's irrelevant. Wherever the peep sight is, it's irrelevant. They're just wanting to feel that kisser button, and that's a crutch. You want to feel the anchor first. Then you're going to just barely adjust the face or the direction of the tip of your nose so that you slightly feel just a tickle of that string on the side of your mouth in the same position the string at the tip of the nose, and at that point, your eye should be looking perfectly through the peep sight for front target or front sight acquisition. So just to give you a quick look here, I'm gonna go ahead and go through my process and let you see how this would look. And then I'm gonna go on and talk to you about what I'm actually looking for in relation to the front sight because once you've made these steps here and you've got your checklist of anchor position, just a slight touch of the corner of the mouth, heads adjusted so the strings at the tip of the nose and you're looking through your peep sight, then I have to tell you what you're looking for. But for now, let's just go through these first steps. And they're steps that I do each and every shot. Looking down at my feet, my eyes are immediately going to my grip, raising my bow to the target, shoulders in position, it's down and forward, I draw the bow till it stops, finding my anchor position, tip of the nose to the string, I'm acquiring my target, letting off my safety, and pulling through my shot. Now that's with a silverback. If you're obviously using a hinge release or a trigger release or even a wrist strap release, those steps might be slightly different in relation to letting off the safety or putting your finger around the trigger. So keep all those things still going exactly how you did. But now let's talk about what you should actually be seeing as you look through that peep sight. We're all familiar with what a archery sight looks like, but I almost like to go back a little bit further and try to relate to what a lot of people really first learned on. At least for me, it was shooting a BB gun or shooting your very first gun or pistol with iron sights. 
And what you've always found is that there's a rear rail that has a little trough and in the front part of the gun, there is a bead that's on the end of the barrel. So we've all been taught to line up that bead perfectly in the trough. In other words, if that bead is up here, then obviously the barrel is sloped up. We're gonna change impact. We're gonna change it no different than if all of a sudden we're only covering half the bead in that trough just like that. So when it comes to archery sights and our peep sight, we want to apply the same rule. We want to make sure that our peep is always giving us a perfect eclipse. So you can see right here where you guys are looking, this is not correct. This is not correct. This is not correct. This is not correct. We're wanting a perfect eclipse. We want to be able to see the entire ring of our front sight while looking through our peep. Now, I like to do what's called lower to right framing. As a right-handed shooter, when I put my peep up here, I like to check my lower first, in other words, I'm looking at the bottom edge of that housing and the bottom edge of the bubble. If all of a sudden I see that half of that bubble is gone, then I know that my head position or my peep position is off. If all of a sudden I can see daylight underneath that bubble, the same is applying. Then I personally like to check my right edge. So if I see more of my actual screws and my sight housing, I know that I'm off. If I don't see the housing and I'm starting to cut off the pins, I also know that I'm not correct. The reason I like lower to right, low to right, is because I'm staying within this quadrant of my pins that's relative to what I'm using. I need to know what my bubble's doing and obviously I'm looking at my pins or past my pins as I'm aiming. Now what a lot of people do, and this is something that the subconscious does, is they actually will continually center individual pins in the middle of their peep sight. So in other words, if you were shooting 20 yards, you would almost do this where the 20 yard pins in the center of your peep, as if you're shooting 50 yards, you would almost have your peep there. Personally, that's not something that I like when shooting fixed pins or multiple fixed pins. I always like to frame correctly first and then adjust my high or low and use the pin on the target that I need to use. Now, one of the reasons also that I like bottom to right when I'm checking my framing is because I need to reference my bubble and if I'm looking from a 50 yard pin all the way to the top, for example on a longer shot, I'm then having to look at my pin, look at my top housing, go all the way down to confirm my bubble and you really don't want that. You want your confirmation to be able to check, check, check check, check, check. It works really well. Now another thing I want to tell you is that your peep diameter is super important because if you start to shoot a peep that's too big like this, obviously you have a big margin of error that you can have and this is going to cause huge variance in your impacts. A lot of target archers shoot a very small peep, so the peep is actually much smaller than their front housing. The smaller the peep, the more you have to focus on centering that to the center. And that's why a lot of target archers have very, very small scopes so that they can still center the scope, but it's in a much smaller diameter peep. But for most hunters, Having a hunting size peep that's going to be practical in the woods where you can gather enough light to the eye, then you're going to just want to make sure you have a peep 
that fits the diameter of your front sight. And if by chance it's a little bit off, that's why some of the sights now have extendable bars so that you can either move them a little bit closer to make them appear bigger, or you can extend them a little bit further out to make that front sight a little bit smaller. Personally, I really prefer to keep things a little bit closer to the riser. That's just me, and it also allows me to shoot um, my standard size peeps and keep the framing that I need. So this is peep framing, and it's absolutely critical that you do this. Now, one of the things that I'm going to give you this week as a little bit of a test is something that I want you to apply on the second day of practice. Now on the first day, I want you to go out, go through your steps, and just start to get comfortable with learning to frame, learning to check bottom, right, center, bottom, right, center, making sure that you're not losing that position to the left, to the right, up or down. Now once you start to get comfortable with that, then I'm going to give you this assignment to work on. Now, some of you out there have taken advantage of getting some of the new knock on targets that I put on the website. This is the one that I nicknamed the tuner. And this is one that actually has multiple applications. And one of the applications is going to be this test. What I want you to do is I want you to go out now that you've practiced a day and you're learning your target acquisition. Now I want you to go out and actually intentionally change your positioning and aim at one of the different stars in each of the quadrants while intentionally slightly adjusting your peep. You don't have to do it much, but I want you to do it just a little bit. So go ahead and top left. I'm gonna have you aim at the top left dot and I'm gonna have you put your peep a little bit to where you have some space on the left and go ahead and make some shots. Then on the right, have a little bit less space on the left, but have more space on the right. Then once you go down, do the same thing. Have some space on the top, use your pin at 20 yards, for example. This is an easy thing to do at 20 yards. Have more space on the top, shoot a few arrows, then move to your other uh, star, move to where your peeps slightly down and shoot another few arrows. This is gonna simulate what happens in situations where you're not paying attention to your peep and you're gonna quickly learn where each of those movements will cause an impact to be. These are things that are relative to terms that you might hear pros saying as I was falling out of my peep. In other words, the longer they held, their head just started to come up and they started to lose their peep, even though they were still aiming with the one pin and they were compensating with the pin, even though they were starting to come out of that peep. Learning where these variances impact and the margin of error that it causes are gonna be absolutely critical to you fully understanding why this step is fifth in line and also why learning to look through the peep site after all these other small steps is so critical.